folks, today on the Stony Ridge Farm, we're gonna take you and we're gonna show you what it takes to have an awesome farm pond on your property, be it a farm pond or just be it a beautiful pond on your property. We're gonna teach you what you need to know to keep up the pond and some food for thought if you're building a pond on your property. Let's have some fun. Woo! <laughs> ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. Afraid of life, times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. That's right. Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another gorgeous morning here on the Stony Ridge Farm. We're in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains and this video is brought to you by Popular Demand. I'm on a 150 acre first generation regenerative farm and we have several farm ponds and folks have been asking, Josh, how did the farm ponds come about? What do you need to do for maintenance? And if I want to build a pond on my property, what do I need to do? What are the processes? What kind of work needs to go into owning a pond like this one? right here that you see behind me and the other two that we have on the farm. So today we're going to visit five different ponds here on my property and on my neighbor's property and we're going to give you some good food for thought in case you want to build a pond on your property, which I know you do. Everybody does. The pond is just beautiful. It brings a lot of value to your home. All right, folks, welcome to the Stony Ridge. If this is your first time here or your 50 millionth time, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. All around us is 150 acres of first generation regenerative farm. It's a beautiful place and we take you and show you things that are going on here on the farm as well as other little projects that I have. So today's project is talking about this farm pond back here behind me and the other farm ponds that we built on the uh, property here. So I have two ponds that I built on the property and this pond was here when we bought the property. However, it was overgrown and it was an absolute disaster. So for the first two years of owning this property, one of my main goals was to get this pond back into shape. And I learned a ton of information while I was doing that. One of the most simple things that I learned was using pond dye and I will post a link to pond dye. There's a certain type of dye, a coloring that you can put in the pond that will really, really enhance the pond and bring the health of the ecosystem up. So I guess the first thing we'll talk about is building a pond. So the pond that's right over beside me to the right and we'll go visit each one of these ponds here very soon. The pond over here to the right side of me we built here on the farm. I have about $2,500 in that pond. That's nothing. It's about uh, three quarters of an acre and it has enough water to sustain my cows indefinitely. So does this pond. So does the other pond. The other pond is about a half an acre but I had problems with the other pond and we're going to learn about soil types and what you need to look for when it comes to building your own pond on your own property. So this pond right here was built in 1961. It's a big, beautiful pond. It's around two to 2.1 acres. And you'll notice that it's not muddy, it's not a mess, and there are no cows out in this pond. So here on the farm, and then something you need to know if you have property and you're thinking of getting livestock, is to fence out your waterways, guys. Fence out your waterways and take care of your waterways. Take care of your ponds like this, because if you let your animals get in there, your cows and stuff like that, and you've all seen it. You've been driving down the road and you've seen cows in the creek cows wading belly deep in the pond and it destroys the ecosystem. So first tip that I can give you is keep your animals out of your waterways on your property if you can. If you don't have animals and you don't need to worry about this. So this pond was covered in green slime. You could not walk across the pond dam. The, the dam is right over there. You could not even walk across it. You couldn't take a machete across it. It was so thick. So what we had to do was come in here and tear out all the trees. We pushed them off with a caterpillar loader and we took an excavator and we dug out all the way around the pond and pulled these trees off. One of the biggest enemies of any pond is trees on the pond dam itself. So what will happen is a tree will grow up on the pond dam, the roots will penetrate deep into the dam and you think, oh, that's going to help hold that pond. Well, inevitably that tree is going to die and what that's going to do it's going to die it's going to rot and it's going to leave you holes in your pond dam where those roots were so that was something that i really had to combat and we had to recompact this pond dam we actually had to take 
uh, and put a new pipe in over here on the back side of it. This pond's only about 8 to 12 feet deep in the very center, and you don't have to have a very deep pond in order to have a very beautiful pond. There's some food for thought for you guys. Now let's talk about fish and habitat. Okay, we're going to go visit my neighbor's pond here in just a minute, and I'll show you some footage of that pond. Habitat is important. Do you want a pond that looks like a golf course or do you want a pond that supports an ecosystem and a habitat for fish, plentiful fish? So my pond down here beside me has a lot more fish in it than my neighbor's pond that doesn't have a lot of habitat. And you can look around the outside edge here and tell that I don't get rid of the grasses that are out in the pond because I want habitat for my fish. I also will take uh, my Christmas tree and I'll toss it up in the upper end of the pond so that that gives good habitat for the fish. What happens with a Christmas tree or brush and debris uh, in this upper end right here is it sits down in the bottom of the pond and the fish are able to lay eggs and the baby fish can hide from the big fish because the big fish can't get in there where those tree limbs are. So that provides habitat for fish to grow. Inside this pond, I have what's called sterile grass carp. And we put about 15 sterile grass carp per acre of pond water. And the way you figure that out is you just go on the GIS website and you measure out your pond. There's plenty of drawing tools on Google Earth and on the GIS website. And what I've done is I put about 32 fish in here and they're called sterile grass carp. Sterile grass carp will consume a ton of forage inside the pond and what that means is all that green slime it looks slimy but it wasn't slime it's called duckweed and it's a little tiny leaf that floats on the top of the water and those fish consumed all of those little tiny weeds and clean this pond up. So we used a little bit of mother nature to help maintain the pond. So I encourage you guys, if you do get a pond, start fresh. Uh, if you have a pond on your property and you have lily problems or you have green slime problems or duckweed problems, consider putting pond dye in your pond, which will help clarify the water. And also that will help to clear up any algae or duckweed. You can also put animals on your pond, such as ducks or geese, but I'll tell you, uh, they don't survive. So if you put an animal out on your pond, like ducks or geese like that, you're gonna find out that those animals are not gonna survive for very long. So what we did, again, we put about, eh, I'd say about 32 grass carp in here. I'm not exactly sure the number. Uh, I'll get you some footage of putting fish in these ponds right now. And we also put catfish in the other two smaller ponds. And I love catfish. I don't know about you guys, but it's nice to be able to go out, hop off the front porch, run down here, catch a fish, and have it for dinner. That's what living's all about for me. So the grass carp will help keep the grass down around the edges of the pond. And if you go out here and you fish and you're reeling in and you catch grass and debris, and pull it up. If you're doing that on your pond currently, then you need some grass carp. Sterile grass carp will not take over the pond, will not ruin the ecosystem, they do not reproduce, and it's something that you guys need to know about. So just a little bit of food for thought there. I also did a few things in these ponds to help feed the fish. I went down the creek and I caught minnows and I caught crawfish and I put those in the pond, especially the new ponds. So the new ponds would have plenty of food for those catfish that I put in there. These ponds support salamanders, tadpoles, fish, turtles, all sorts of stuff. There is an awesome ecosystem, not to mention all of the beneficial insects like dragonflies that come from having a pond. Another question that I get a lot about ponds. Well, I've got a pond like this. Oh man, I bet you got tons of mosquitoes. If you have a healthy ecosystem in your pond, you will not have mosquitoes, guys. So it's something to think about. I know a lot of people are standoffish about building a pond close to their property because they're afraid they're gonna have mosquitoes. Again, you're building not only a pond and a place of beauty and a water source for your livestock, you're also building something that's an ecosystem. And everything starts as an ecosystem. It starts in the soil, it starts in the water here on the Stony Ridge Farm. So let's take a little pond walk around this pond and I'll show you the differences in the ecosystem that I have here versus my neighbor's pond that doesn't have a lot of ecosystem, but he doesn't have a lot of the problems that I have too because cattails bring certain types of critters. And we'll walk around the pond here and we'll show you. So you'll see a little bit of green slime floating around on top of the pond. This is a, an annual thing, okay? So you can't fight mother nature, but so much. 
This is an annual thing and we get a little bit of algae that grows on the pond in the hot, hot summer months. You can't fight it. You just deal with it. And that's what we do. We just deal with this. So if you look at this pond, you get a good close look here. You'll notice I've got some rocks out in the pond. This is ecosystem. All of this grass is ecosystem. All of this cattail area, we'll walk over here to the cattails. This is an ecosystem too, guys. Now you won't see a lot of cattails in my neighbor's pond that we're getting ready to go visit because he's eliminated the cattails. What happens is all of these aquatic plants right here have a bulb associated with them. And what will happen, we've got a few muskrats that like to live up in this upper area of the pond and they will pull up these bulbs and they'll eat them. That's how you tell if you have muskrats. If you look out in your pond, you'll see floating pieces of debris from the cattails that the muskrats are pulling up. Now muskrats can be healthy for a pond and they can be a hindrance for a pond. They can go in under your pond dam and they can disturb the pond dam. They'll dig back into the pond dam. They'll dig back into here. They're not digging in my pond dam and I'm not very, very concerned right now but they are digging back here. This pond backs up underneath the road and there is a swampy area on the other side and the muskrats go back and forth in between. But they're nesting right up in here. So it's 2022 right now. This pond was built in late 2019. Again, I have $2,500 in this pond. Isn't it gorgeous? I, I mean, the house is right up there on the top of the hill. The pond is right here. But something you need to know about when you build a pond is you need to have the proper soil and you need to have somebody that knows what the heck they're doing when they build the pond. Perfect example of not knowing what the heck you're doing is the upper pond and I had a huge leak in it and I just did a video about repairing that leak. So this pond right here has a very, very healthy ecosystem also. Uh, you can see the grasses are growing up around it. I put riprap rock on the dam and you'll see my neighbor's pond has a lot of riprap. Uh, this really helped keep the pond dam where it's at and keep dirt from falling off over in here when you first build a new pond. Now you'll see a little bit of green slime on this pond also. It's just algae from the hottest time of the year, guys. And it's something that's absolutely normal. Now this pond has something a little different than the other ponds. And I can see some fish right there. Right there is a little uh, crappy bed, either crappy or uh, bass. And this pond has catfish in it. I just saw one come up. Tons of frogs, tons of uh, life in this pond, just tons of activity all the time. And this pond is about 14 feet deep right in the middle. You can see the pond dam right here. I leave the grass alone as best I possibly can on the pond dam, but I don't allow trees to grow. Let's show you how the pipe system works on this pond versus the other pond that has a stand pipe. I'll take a look at this pipe system. Boy, there's a lot of fish swimming around in there. That is awesome. Some fish I didn't even put in there. So there's a pipe right here. And this pond has a flow. It comes from a spring. It's spring fed and it runs at about three gallons per minute. That pipe goes through the dam, comes out right here on the other side and runs back down to the creek area. So before I built this pond, this was a swamp. This was a swampy wet area on the farm and it was absolutely useless. It was the ugliest place on the entire farm. And now you guys can see it's just absolutely gorgeous. So we talked about the through pipe in the pond that we have right here. We've got a pipe that runs through the dam in the upper pond also. Now, we have stand pipes in this pond. So there's a stand pipe here from when the pond was first built back in 1961. And then when I cleared out and cleaned up around this pond, we put another stand pipe in, guys. So there's another stand pipe right here. You'll see that white pipe sticking up. That pipe runs through the dam and comes out right here. This pipe is easily disassembled. In other words, I can take that pipe and I can pull it apart and I can drop the level of the pond up to about two and a half to three feet. There is a specific type of fitting on the top of this pipe and you can get a little close up. I'll actually post a, uh, a picture of the type of fitting. So water goes into that fitting, it goes 
up into it and falls down. When the water level rises, what that does, and you can see water marks on here, when the water level rises, it keeps trash from going down in the standpipe. And if it goes up above the standpipe, which it does sometimes, it'll fall down in there. That is not the scenario that we have with that standpipe. And you'll see a piece of pipe in here. This is what I used to use to water the cows. There used to be a waterer right down there. So not only were these ponds something beautiful, a place to fish, a place to get good food, but they're also serving as irrigation and water for the farm. So if I ever need to irrigate my pastures, I've got this pond to do it. I'm gonna go up and see my neighbor's pond. All right, this is my neighbor's cabin and we're heading down to his pond. He's got two big, beautiful ponds here on the property. And you can see it's much more maintained than my ponds on my property. Cruise down here. You can see that he has some riprap right here on his property. He's got a couple docks out on his property, but you can also see that he doesn't quite have the habitat that I have. Now this pond is only about an acre larger than the pond that I have uh, down there that we were just at, the one built in 1961. And you can see how nicely he's placed all these riprap stones. So we have just one section of cattails right here. And what I need to tell you is that he had a huge problem with muskrats. And when he eliminated all the habitat, he eliminated the muskrats. So uh, he does have turtles, fish, all sorts of aquatic life here in the pond. However, he does not have the amount of habitat that I have. Now this is his standpipe. This standpipe is designed uh, with a cover over top of it to keep debris out of it. Once in a while we'll get a flood and a turtle or something will get stuck on the top of that standpipe. There's a backup system in place right here and the backup system on my pond on the other place, it just flows over the dam. The backup system here is a through pipe that goes through the dam and comes out on the other side right here. So if the water ever gets up, this is an 18 inch corrugated double walled pipe that will help drain this pond. But you can see the ecosystem is totally different up here in his ponds. My neighbor treats his ponds about two times a year with a little bit of pond dam and he puts about five grass carp per year in his pond. What you need to know about grass carp is that grass carp thrive in a pond with a lot of water. What happens is the bigger, the fatter they get, the less they eat. So you've got to keep putting them in year after year after year. And as you can tell, it's really worked to make his pond absolutely gorgeous. All he does, he keeps the weeds down on the outside of the pond. He just keeps it mowed and weed whacked and he keeps those grass carp in here and he puts a lot of grass carp so that they keep this water absolutely gorgeous and clean. Putting the aqua blue pond dye in here also helps to keep this pond nice and clean. And this pond is probably about 24 to 25 feet deep in the very center. Beautiful, beautiful place. You can see the dam, how well constructed it is. When my neighbor bought this property, this was covered with trees also. It was overgrown and you could not walk around this property. So there's a lot of neglected property and a lot of neglected ponds out there. And you guys can really find a value in that. It is better to buy property with a pond than it is to build a pond on your property. Now, last but not least, I'm gonna take you up. I'm gonna show you how I messed up on my smaller pond on the top of the hill on the Stony Ridge. This is the pond that I messed up. <laughs> and there's still a lot of water in this pond. This is about 12 feet deep in the center right here. The pond level dropped. So we had a seriously dry year this year and the pond level dropped. This is a spring fed pond also, but it only gets about two gallons per minute. So it's filling up slowly from the pond repairs that I did. I put a product in here called Dam It. Dam It is a sealer that you put in the water and it attaches itself to soil and seals off any leaks. Where I messed up was this soil was very rocky, okay? So it had lots of large rocks in it and there are a couple large rocks right up underneath here where I just put this dirt and those large rocks are allowing for a, a, a pathway for water to pass through the dam. So lesson learned, Make sure you have the appropriate type of soil. Don't put sticks and rocks in your pond dam because they will not hold. This is not damming up the creek in the third grade, I'll tell you that. 
So this pond right here serves several purposes. Um, there was an irrigation pipe set in this pond to keep the cows watered. At one point we drilled a well and now we don't have to do that. You'll see a lot of habitat in here and you see the water is almost a black color right here. There are catfish in this pond. This solely has catfish. That's all it has in it. We have tons of habitat. As the water level continues to rise, a lot of this grass will start taking over. And what we'll have to do is we'll put our grass carp in here. If we have any trouble with lilies or anything like that, that's when we will instill the pond dye. That dye helps light escape and go down into the pond and helps to eliminate any sort of algae problem that you might have in your pond. I had no idea about this stuff before I moved to the country and before I bought my property and built a few ponds, guys. So hopefully this little ride around, this little pond lesson has helped you guys. We'll get you some awesome footage of building that pond down by the house, uh, I guess in 2019. I think you'll really like that. This is just an absolutely beautiful place, guys. But there's work that you have to do if you have a farm pond, and I wanted you guys to be well informed. If you build a pond, if you buy a pond, um, or if you have a place that has a disaster of a pond like this. There are all sorts of solutions to help you have a beautiful property and some great ponds on your property, a great ecosystem for wildlife. Uh, the deer come up here and drink, turkeys come up here and drink, all sorts of wildlife's always around this pond right here. And there's gorgeous catfish and frogs all around the bank, so. Awesome guys. Well, thank you all so much for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm. I know I talked for about 10 or 12 minutes there about ponds, but I think there's a lot more information out there. I'll post some links to the dye that I use in the pond, and I'll also post a link to where you guys can pick up fish. If you decide you want fish in your pond, um, I think it's called Arkansas Pond Stockers. I'll post a link to their website so you can find out when they're in your area. They travel the country and they stop in and sell fish at various little hardware stores. Pretty cool. Guys, thanks a lot. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. Please pound that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. I'd love to have you back here on the farm with me. Take care. Woo! Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! I knew you. I had to spit. It was nasty. I had some nasty stuff. I woke up and said nasty. So, so nasty up in my mouth. <laughs> mm, mm, lemon face, ooh, lion face. <laughs> <laughs>